In this video, I'll be sharing five reasons why I'm not buying the Mac Studio right now and why I'm going to wait and see what Apple's full 2022 Mac lineup and maybe even their 2023 Mac lineup is before taking the plunge and getting a new Mac. Hi, I'm Aiden Quigley from aq.ie Websites and Branding and welcome to my YouTube channel where I talk about tech, web design and branding. Before we get into it, give the video a like, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell button to turn on post notifications because I'm trying to hit the 1000 subscriber mark before the end of the year. Okay, let's go. The first reason is the studio display. If you're getting the Mac Studio, you're probably at least considering getting the studio display too, which is essentially a thicker version of the iMac 5K Retina display with only a few differences. An updated 1080p webcam with center stage, a three mic array microphone, and true tone, thanks to the A13 chip that the display packs, but that's it. Up until a few weeks ago, you could get an incredible 5K display and a full computer inside it with the iMac 5K for just $1,899. And now we're expected to pay $1,599 for a standalone monitor and up to $2,299 if you want the nano texture glass to reduce reflections and the tilt and height adjustment as well. Which leads me to my second point, which is the rumored return of the 27 inch iMac that could be coming as early as 2023. If you're considering the Mac Studio, chances are you were probably in the market for an iMac 5K and rumors pointed to an updated version being released this year. However, since Apple's March 8th event, when they launched the Mac Studio and Studio Display, they said there was only one more Mac to transition to Apple Silicon and that that Mac was the Mac Pro. That, combined with the fact that Apple removed the 27-inch iMac from their website, and now if you try to enter the URL, it redirects to the 24-inch, I don't expect we'll see a larger iMac form factor, at least for this year. There are rumors, though, that Apple will in fact return to the all-in-one form factor with an iMac Pro or maybe even an iMac Studio, but not until next year at the earliest, which makes sense because they're really pushing people towards the modular Mac Studio. There's just something about a larger all-in-one desktop that feels right, so I'm hopeful that Apple will return to this form factor, even if it is just with an M2 Max chip, because I have to believe that if they can fit an M1 Max in the 16-inch MacBook Pro, then they'll be at least able to fit it in into a redesigned 27 inch iMac Pro. And maybe they can even make an M2 Ultra work for it as well. With Apple's rumored next gen chip expected to be based on a smaller, more efficient four nanometer process that could improve thermal efficiency, I have hope. The third reason is the M1 Ultra's performance. Since people got their hands on the M1 Ultra, we've seen a bunch of benchmarks showing that for most use cases, the jump in performance between the M1 Max and the M1 Ultra isn't that great. The M1 Ultra doubles the 10 core CPU and 32 core GPU of the M1 Max, giving you a total of 20 CPU cores and a crazy 64 GPU cores. And this is likely to be fantastic for render times and optimized apps like Apple's upcoming version of Final Cut Pro, which is still in beta version 10.6.2, but not all programs make full use of all of these cores. According to Apple's website, for instance, Photoshop on the M1 Ultra is only 2.5 times better at processing well-threaded filters than the 10-core 27-inch Intel Core i9 iMac, while the M1 Max is 2.2 times faster, that's not even close to double. So if you're thinking about getting the M1 Ultra Max Studio and you haven't ordered it already, I'd wait and see what real-world usage tests come out in the next few weeks, because there's already a two or three month wait time to get your hands on it if you order now. So what's a couple more weeks to make sure that you don't buy something the applications you want to use can't even make use of. If you're enjoying this video so far, give it a like and hit the subscribe button so I can reach my goal of getting 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year. The fourth reason to hold off getting a Mac Studio is because you probably haven't done all you can to revive your current Mac. For example, I've got a 27 inch iMac 5K from 2014 that earlier this year seemed to be on its last legs. It was a chore to do even simple tasks like search my inbox and mail, but with a little research, I was able to find out a few ways to restore the snappiness that you expect from an Apple product. I'll be sharing those tips in an upcoming video. So if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my channel so you can find out how I brought my iMac back from the brink of replacement so that you can get more out of your current Mac setup. The fifth reason to hold off on getting the Mac Studio is Apple will 100% be launching a Mac Pro this year, and they could even launch an M2 Pro Mac Mini as well. As of March 2022, Apple still hasn't transitioned its full lineup to Apple Silicon yet. 
The higher-end Intel Mac Mini is still for sale on Apple's website, making me think an M2 and M2 Pro version of the Mac Mini might be coming that would offer even faster single-core performance. Plus, the Mac Pro is almost definitely going to be announced at WWDC in June, alongside an even more premium display than the studio display, maybe with a larger 30-inch or 32-inch display size and mini LED to replace the Pro Display XDR. Let me know in the comments if you're planning to wait and see what Apple's full product lineup looks like, if you've already ordered a Mac Studio, or if you'll be getting one as soon as some more real-world tests and benchmarks come out. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and hit the bell button to turn on post notifications because it will help me with the YouTube algorithm and to hit my 1,000 subscriber mark. Before you go, check out some of these videos over here, and that's it for this week. I'm Aiden Quigley from AQ.ie, and thanks for watching.